Welcome to the online platform of Concepts of Geology. We are meeting again after a long time and hoping that you are doing well. Uh, today's class is actually on demand and today we learn to solve a problem of geochemistry. The problem is written here. The mole percentage of SiO2, Al2O3 and K2O in a granitic rock are 84.21. 7.89 and 7.89 respectively. The molar proportion in percentage of K feldspar in the rock will be how much? Okay, so this is the problem, and this problem is taken from IIT JAM examination. Okay, so we'll try to solve out this problem. If we try to visualize or pictureize the question first, then the question will look like that. Okay, suppose we are having a granitic rock and we are doing geochemistry of this granite, geochemical analysis of this gra granite. Okay, the granite is containing mainly uh, feldspar and quartz. Fine, and we are having SiO2, Al2O3, and K2O as the main oxides in this rock, and we are having SiO2 84.21% and these two uh, rest components they are 7.89%. Okay. Now, we have to calculate the mineralogy of the granite first and after that we need to calculate the molar percentage of potassium feldspar in this rock. Okay. Now, before doing anything, we need to have a clear conception of mole. Let us concentrate on this uh, chemical reaction which is the formation of KALSI3OE that is the potassium feldspar. Potassium feldspar breaks down into K2O, Al2O3 and SiO2. Okay. If we balance this reaction, we will get 2 KLSI3O8 that will be broken down into 1 mole of K2O, 1 mole of Al2O3 and 6 mole of SiO2. Okay. Now, what is mole? The amount of any particle, suppose it may be electron, proton, neutron or suppose any atom or any molecules or any subatomic particles, whatever, which is containing 6.023 into 10 to the power 23 numbers of that particle. Okay, so that much amount of matter we will say that, that is one mole of matter. Okay, so it is nothing but a unit of amount. Now again, concentrate on this reaction. Here we are having two mole of KALSI3O8. Okay, and here one mole, one mole, and here six mole of uh, SiO2. Fine. Now, if I convert it into number of molecules, so here I will have 2 into 6.023 into 10 to the power 23 numbers of molecules. Okay. See, clearly here it, it was mole. Here it was 2 mole, but when I am talking about the molecule, so 1 mole, one mole is containing 6.023 into 10 to the power 23 number of molecules. Okay. So, this much of KLSI3O8 will contain 2 into 6.023 into 10 to the power 23 numbers of molecules. Okay, and subsequently these these oxides will be written uh, also here. Okay, so from today onwards, keep a clear visualization about the chemical reaction. Okay, whatever is written here is in terms of mole. Fine. So we have understood this reaction till now. Now we will take a more deeper look into this element. Okay, K2. So in this reaction to form two moles of KLSI3O8, we need one mole of K2O. Okay. Now, the formation of K2O reaction is like this one. Now, again, this reaction is written in terms of mole. So, two mole of K2O will be broken down into four mole of potassium and one mole of oxygen. Okay. So, if I uh, convert it into the in terms of molecules, again, we will have that much of molecule here and that much of molecule here and that much of molecule here. Okay, so again I am emphasizing that from today onwards we will never say that two molecule of K2O will be broken down into four molecule of K or one molecule of uh, O2. Okay, these are not molecules, these are actually moles. If I convert it into in terms of uh, molecules, so this much of molecule, this much of molecule and this much of molecule will be needed. Again, if I break down this O2, we will have two mole of oxygen atoms. Fine. So, one mole of oxygen molecule will be broken down into two mole of oxygen atoms. Okay. So, how much molecule is here? It will be 6.023 into 10 to the power 23. And how much of oxygen atoms are here? It will be 2 into 6.023 into 
10 to the power 23 numbers of atoms okay now think of this entire reaction how much atoms are involved in this reaction okay these are in terms of mole if i convert it into number of atoms a huge number of atoms are involved in this chemical reaction to make the conception of mole much more clearer we will take an example from uh, the oxygen now very commonly from our childhood from our school days we know that the uh, molecular weight of oxygen is 32 gram and the atomic weight of oxygen is 16 gram okay so what does this actually mean do the atomic weight of oxygen mean the weight of one atom of oxygen no it is actually the weight of one mole of oxygen atoms okay we can prove this very clearly here okay suppose this is an isotope of oxygen okay 8 or 16 now what is the components or what is the constituents of this uh, 8 or 16 here i will have eight number of protons eight neutrons and eight electrons we know each individual proton is having a weight of 1.6726 into 10 to the power minus 24 gram okay so eight proton will have this much of weight similarly eight neutron will have this much of weight and eight electron will have this much of weight the weight of electrons are very much negligible so we can actually uh, ignore it but i am taking here in the calculation okay so the mass of one oxygen atom is this one plus this one plus this one okay so this will be 2.678 into 10 to the power minus 23 gram okay so then the mass of one mole of oxygen will be how much one mole of oxygen atom how much so this much is the weight of a single oxygen atom okay so one mole of oxygen atom will have and weight of multiply it with uh, 6.023 into 10 to the power 23 so we'll have 16.14 gram of weight okay that means what the 6.023 into 10 to the power 23 numbers of oxygen atoms will have a weight of a 16.14 gram okay now see this is very much close to the atomic weight of oxygen fine there will always have some error because in an atom there is not only proton neutron and electrons there are some energies and some subatomic particles whatever okay so roughly we are calculating this is almost 16 gram fine now if i concentrate on the oxygen molecule okay so in within one molecule we are having two atoms of oxygen okay so the weight of one molecule will be this much two into this one okay and one mole of oxygen molecule will have an weight of 32.28 gram again see this is pretty much closer to the molecular weight of oxygen okay so that means we are having a proof here that 32 gram oxygen is containing actually one mole of oxygen molecules okay or 16 gram of oxygen is actually containing one mole of oxygen atoms okay not a single oxygen atom is having 16 gram of weight or not a single oxygen molecule is having a weight of 32.28 gram fine now i think you have understood the conception of mole and we will return to the original question again so we were having a granite okay and by chemical composition of this granite we are having sio2 al2o3 and k2o3 components in this granite okay the concentration of SiO2 was 84.21% okay and Al2O3 and K2O was 7.89%. So first we will try to find out the mineralogy of the granite. Normally granite contains quartz and feldspar and the components which are given here we can form quartz and feldspar through these components only. So we will try to find out the proportion of KaLSi3 weight first okay. To form two mole of KaLSi3 weight we need one mole of K2O, one mole of Al2O3 and six mole of SiO2 okay so clearly we are having 7.89 uh, mole of K2O and Al2O3 that means we can form double amount of this amount KaLSi3 weight okay so maximum amount of KaLSi3 weight that can be produced from 7.89 mole of K2O and Al2O3 will be 2 into 7.89 that means 15.89 seven eight mole of k al si3 weight okay after that the k2o and al23 will be consumed so no more k al si3 weight will be formed okay and how much amount of sio2 is needing for this reaction we are needing the proportion of sio2 will be six times of the k2o and al23 okay so we are having k2 
K2O and Al2O3 7.89 mole. Okay, so the SiO2 needed 6 into 7.89. That means 47.34. Okay, now the SiO2 which is remaining after formation of this K feldspar that will produce quartz. So how much of SiO2 is available for formation of quartz? This much of SiO2 is available. So this will form free quartz. Okay, so we are having quartz and K feldspar in this granite. Okay. Quartz is this mole and K feldspar is this mole. So the total moles present in this granite is this much. 52.65 mole is the total number of mole present in the granite. Fine. So what will be the mole percentage of K feldspar? Okay. So proportion of K feldspar is this one. 15.78 divided by the total mole into 100. Okay. So this will be 29.97 percent. Okay. So that means in this rock we are having 29.97 percent of K feldspar and the rest amount will be what? The rest amount will be quartz. So the rock is containing almost 30 percent of alkali feldspar and 70 percent of quartz. Okay. So clearly this is an alkali feldspar granite. Okay. So we have solved the problem. I think you have understood the solve. If you have not understood till now, let me know in the comment section. Okay. Thank you.